Published in book form in 1986, Mouse by Art Spiegelman is a graphic historical memoir that recounts the story of Art Spiegelman's parents during the Holocaust. Upon doing my own research, I discovered that Spiegelman wants Mouse referred to as a graphic historical memoir or book, rather than just a graphic novel, because what is presented within the novel is fact rather than fiction. The events depicted within the novel are recounted through conversations that Art, referred to as Artie within the book, has with his late father, Vladik, and it is a real account of what Vladik, as well as his wife and Art's mother, Anja, went through as Polish Jews during the Holocaust. Within the book, Art Spiegelman made the artistic decision to illustrate Jewish people as mice. Nazis are portrayed by cats, and non-Jewish Polish people are depicted as pigs. I personally found it captivating that Spiegelman made such an artistic decision as this one. The dehumanization of these characters is evident, but in return it serves as a constant reminder that these animals that Spiegelman has chosen are in fact substitutes for real people. Our Spiegelman chooses to place his own self within the book as the relayer of the information being given to him by his father. It is through this decision made by Spiegelman that I was reminded of the real and true humanity of these characters within the text. I was reminded that these events did actually happen and that this story is in fact true. In writing Mouse, Spiegelman created the first comic that discusses the Holocaust. No one had ever done it before. Spiegelman's decision to write the story as a graphic historical book rather than just in a novel form in the form of prose has allowed the story to be shown more by the author rather than just simply by telling. He has let the story talk. Scott McCloud in his 1993 book Understanding Comets states that comics are quote, juxtaposed pictorial images in deliberate sequence intended to convey information and or produce an aesthetic response in the viewer, unquote. On each and every page of Mouse, Spiegelman has used closure, meaning that we as the viewer observe parts of events through images, but we continue per to perceive the whole, the image as a whole, thus creating a unified picture or reality altogether. Additionally, Spiegelman utilizes the gutter throughout Mouse. It is our own job as the reader to draw a conclusion in regards to what is occurring between one panel to the next. Although I did notice that throughout the book, the gutter is used less when Artie is interviewing Vladik and asking for his story. Such a decision was made because it seems to me that we are meant to be, in a way, Artie. We are getting this story from his father, and it is us interviewing him, and we are there in New York, where Vladik now resides in the present day. And on the contrary, the gutter is used when we are following Vladik and Anja during the Holocaust because Artie, or we, aren't there. We are to never know of the real and raw emotions and events that happened within every second as Vladik and Anja avoided getting captured and sent to Auschwitz by the Nazis. I find that there is importance in Spiegelman's use of gutters when the story of his father Vladik is told. As a reader of the book, I began to fill in those white spaces between panels with my own narrative details, most of which were filled with a sense of worry and unknown, which I imagined is what Vladik felt while trying to avoid being captured by German authority. By using gutters, Spiegelman has successfully conveyed the concept that each and every moment undergone by his father during the Holocaust was its own separate thing. There was no telling what was to happen next. There was fear everywhere for the Jewish people and a sort of sense of loneliness because in a way they were being tracked and singled out. Choosing to have this story told in the form of a graphic historical book that utilizes illustrations rather than just words, Spiegelman has chosen to emphasize and successfully presented emotions by the characters within Mouse. A journal article by Jean C. Ewart titled Reading Visual Narrative, Art, Spiegelman's Mouse, states, quote, The novice reader of Mouse will likely assume that the comic merely illustrates the textual narrative and is more likely to read the captions and speech balloons than she is to read the cartoon images themselves, missing that specific contribution to the stories told within the balloons, unquote. There is more to comics than just reading, the words that are given on each page. It is the job of those words to describe what is happening within each scene and within each panel of the comic. But the illustrations put those descriptions into visual representations so that the viewer has a stronger understanding of what is being felt by the characters within the book. The illustrations may also depict emotions and actions that are not stated through dialogue. A scene on page 75 of volume 1 of Mouse illustrates this very idea. 
Within these panels, Vladek Spiegelman, the artist's father, is seen eating dinner with his wife Anja and her family. Vladek has just returned from forced military service in the Polish army and time spent in a prisoner of war camp. In these scenes, Vladek is being informed of the strict food rationing in the Jewish market and the dangerous growing black market. But at the same time as this conversation, Vladek's son Rishu is craving his father's attention and is unable to receive this attention because of Vladek's conversation. Rishu promptly begins to throw a fit before being comforted by his mother. And this entire interaction goes unnoticed and unmentioned in the dialogue. Failing to view these illustrations, and this one in particular, wouldn't allow the viewer to understand the relationship that Vladek and Anja had with their dead son Rishu and the anger felt by Spiegelman's Spiegelman, who often felt neglected by his parents over their inability to recover from the death of their son. As stated previously, Maus tells the story of how Art Spiegelman's Jewish parents survived the Holocaust in Poland. The memoir takes place over two timelines, the present, which was during the 1980s in New York and the United States, and the other timeline around 1935 before the beginning of World War II and up until around 1944 in Poland. World War II began in 1939 following the invasion of Poland by the Nazis. It then continued to last six years before coming to an end in 1945. Throughout those six years, Jewish people across Europe were discriminated against by the Nazi party and they faced constant religious persecution. Such a concept is known as anti-Semitism, which is the act of being hostile or prejudiced against Jewish people. Nazis had a distorted worldview that led them to believe the people of the Jewish community to be a race. Additionally, Nazis feared that Jewish people would prevent German dominance and the Jews would at some point destroy the German race. For Nazis, the death of all Jewish people was necessary in order to preserve the German race and um, the so-called German Aryan race, simply meaning that the Germans thought themselves to be of a superior race in relation to the inferior Jews. It was a false notion and a false race because it simply wasn't and isn't real. It only became real in order to glorify the German people. From the very beginning of the memoir, we see the rise in power of the Nazi party and the dehumanizing effects that they have on the Jewish people of Poland where Vladek and Anja reside. Vladek and Anja were married on February 14, 1937. Vladek originally came from a lower status, one in which he had to earn his keep. But Anja came from a family of millionaires, the Zeibelbergs who owned one of the largest hosiery factories in Poland. Following his marriage to Anja, Vladek was given an apartment by his father-in-law, part ownership of his father's business, and a gold watch as a wedding gift. Such an increase in status became important as the Nazis increased in power and control. At first, lower-class Jews who did not have money to protect them were taken by German authority. This form of conviction then increased to include those in their old age who were sick and had a low prospect of survival. Homes were raided, taking control of, and food was rationed, thus promptly leading to a rise in the black market. The black market was a direct response to the rationing that began to occur during World War II. Yes, it was illegal, but it became the only way for those who still could afford food to obtain it. In order to keep his wealth and his status, Vladek began to trade gold and jewelry, rather than clothing, clothing because trading gold and jewelry was much easier to hide. Additionally, Vladek had a food business in which he would sell extra items from those involved in the black mar market to smaller shops on, and, um, under the counter. Beginning in 1941, it was not uncommon for Vladek and his family to receive notices from the, German, the Germans that they were required to be relocated or transferred to cities around Poland, and running from authority became a normal aspect of Vladek's life. As the war continued and the risk of getting caught increased, Vladek and his family spent a lot of their time moving from place to place, shelter to shelter, trying to hide despite being unaware of who they could trust to keep them hidden. Vladek and Anja made an attempt to flee to Hungary in 1944, but upon their ar arrival in Bielsko Biala, the train stopped and was raided by the Gestapo on all sides. Vladek and Anja and others aboard the train were then promptly marched through the city of Bielsko, even marching past a factory that Vladek once owned. Both Vladek and Anja were put in a prison until they were loaded onto a truck a few days later and taken to the town of Auschwitz. It is there that both of them are then taken to Auschwitz. 
In his retelling to his son, Vladek states, quote, and we came here to the concentration camp Auschwitz, and we knew that from here we will not come out anymore. We knew the stories that they will gas us and throw us in the ovens. This was 1944. We knew everything, and here we are, unquote. Having never actually read any sort of graphic novels in my own time, I chose Mouse because it combines two interests of which I care deeply about, the Holocaust and banned books. Truthfully, I came across this graphical, graphic historical memoir through a YouTube video discussing commonly banned books, an issue which I think is becoming increasingly more relevant in our modern day society. Mouse itself was recently banned in a Tennessee school district because it contains, quote, inappropriate language, unquote. These decisions have progressively become more and more pertinent as conservative officials across the country have worked more and more to limit the types of books that children in public schools are exposed to, including books that address structural racism and LGBTQ issues. Tennessee school board member Tony Allman states, quote, it, mouse, shows people hanging. It shows them killing kids. Why does the educational system promote this kind of stuff? It is not wise or healthy, unquote. The challenging and banning of books is harmful to the youth as it prevents them from learning about the world around them and people that they may come across. It leads to a lack of worldly knowledge and common sense. It hinders their ability to learn, as well as their ability to be curious and to ask questions. These children will go on to lead sheltered lives of unreasonable in innocence. They won't have the freedom to properly learn if materials that allow them to learn are unavailable. It is important that children read what is being taken from them because what is being taken from them is what they need to know. It is crucial that the next generation is educated on the tragedies and horrific events depicted in Mouse.